Murray Henderson, it was execution, 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 execution. Yeah. Mike, you're not going to win a prize if you're missing a grace note, if you're missing a double tackle. You know, and just trying to, to model his playing in terms of watching his fingers work. I would, I would watch him play and then I would go play myself and close my eyes and imagine my hands were his and try to lift him off that channel the way he did. And, and did, they go, all the time. did they go for the big grace notes, the Murray Henderson? Did, I, you know, you know yeah. raising the finger right off well, the channel. Well, that's the way Murray plays. His eye. That's I why I'm asking Yeah, you. I don't know if that was intentional, okay, on Murray's part, but... It was intentional with Ronnie Laurie, for instance. Was it? Yeah. yeah. See, I, I don't know if that was intentional, uh -huh. but I knew that my fingers didn't always leave that channel <laughs> when I wanted them to. <laughs> so if I tried to lift them higher, if I consciously made that effort, then I would, I would work it in to where it would start happening. Yeah. And that's what I got from Murray. Yeah. You know, and plus he taught, you know, he went through many, many tunes with me, mm -hmm. you know, marches for spades and wheels. But there was still something missing in my light music playing. Um, and what I didn't realize, and which no one really paid much attention to, was that I was an American kid, a Texan, Grew up listening to rock and roll, not Scottish music. No one in my family played the pipes. Mm -hmm. Trying to play Scottish music without understanding Scottish music. And that was coming through in my playing. Okay. And it, and it wasn't until I met my future father-in-law, Sandy McPhee, mm -hmm. that this became apparent to me. And and his, his parents had immigrated, you know, up to, to Ontario from South U.S. A lot of piping, and or not Ontario, Detroit area. A lot of people from Lewis, South U.S. immigrated to Detroit. A lot of piping up in that area. A lot of Gaelic speakers. And um, he met me at a games in Atlanta, and I'd, I'd won everything that day. I was probably 19. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he, he'd had a few whiskeys in him, and he said, you know, we, we don't want to have to bleep this out, but you can probably right. fill in the blanks. You're a blank, blank disgrace. Aye. Kid with your fingers playing the way you're playing. It's just absolutely terrible. And I'm thinking, who's this guy <laughs> looking at my trophies? <laughs> you know. And he goes, my name's Sandy McPhee. He goes, I live in Florida. If you come visit me, I'll teach you music. Well, I talked to my parents, and they said, what do you got to lose? I was, at, I was in university at the time yeah. in Nashville. And I thought, oh, well, going down to Florida on the weekend, that can't be too bad. Okay. So, right? So I went down there, and the first time I went to see him, we, we hardly played practice chant or pipes, but he brought out tapes and recordings of Gallic singing, uh -huh. you know, of accordion players playing marches and spades and reels, fiddlers. I was like, wow, this uh -huh. is so, th th they're playing, this is Abercrombie Highlanders on a fiddle. Yeah. And listen to that lift. Well, so it's, it's getting the idiom. Right. So I began with him to understand the music. Mm -hmm. And so to me that was all very pivotal. All these things, pivotal, life-changing uh, moments for me in terms of my, my career as a competitive player and, and also as a teacher. Because uh, it all began to make sense. Uh, that's, it's taken that's, a, it took a while. I, but that's some rounded education, isn't it? It is. When you, you were very, really fortunate that all these guys, you know, picked them, the Providence sort of just put them there for you. Yeah. And you're winning prizes across in North America. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you come to Scotland? How often did you come to Scotland? And right. Uh, well, af happened? after that first contest, probably 79, when I got that prize at Glen Finnan, uh, that was it. You know, I started coming back every summer, playing at uh, playing at the games, uh, traveling to the contests. You know, I'd, I'd bring a, put my stuff in a backpack, and I'd take trains and buses and go do the game circuit in August. Great. And met a lot of people, varying degrees of success, um, but it was a lot of paying your dues. You know, uh -huh. but also playing it open in Inverness. And uh, I played in the first silver medal contest at Inverness, and uh, I played Lachlan McNeil, Cantarbert Sansi. 
and uh, I played a wrong, for some stupid reason, in the first line I played a wrong phrase, uh, but it was a great, I remember it being a great tune, you know, it played really well, and the results were forever coming out. Mm -hmm. And uh, Don McPherson was on the bench, and we found out, he told Jimmy that they were looking for an alternative setting for Lachlan McNeil, thinking I'd played an alternative setting, mm -hmm. because I was going to win the contest. Okay. But they found it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that was a perfect first to last. Yeah. First place to last, which I encountered a number of times in my career, you know. Okay. Um, but just started going to games and started getting the prizes, getting the prizes, and, and, and working my way through Open and Inverness. You know, right. I sort of, I finally got up. I was gotten to the gold medal at, at Inverness, but I couldn't get into the gold medal at Open at the time. So I was playing the two different levels. That's before they had the joint committees and yeah. all this stuff. So, right so early on. the Inverness gold medal, what was the tune? Oh, the Inverness medal was um, Queen Anne's Lament. No, 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 no. Take that back. It's Mackay's Banner. Mackay's Banner. I won that in 87, but I won the Urban Medal in 84. Ah. Playing Queen Anne's Lament. But, but the way I got into the Urban Medal was the previous year I would gotten to play in Inverness in the gold medal for some reason. I got a third prize. Okay. So they put, that put me into the gold medal at Urban without ever winning the silver medal. Right. So I never won the silver medal. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, -huh. uh -huh. So my first big prize though was was in '83 when I won the the Dunvegan Medal at Sky, playing, playing Rory McLeod's Lament. And, uh, yeah, another big tune. Oh, great tune! Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that that was really the beginning. '83, mm -hmm. when everything took off. Okay. Yeah. Um, so can you remember? Roughly many firsts or anything like that. I know no, that's these I, I calculations can't. from time to time. Yeah, no, I can't remember I, that. You you won quite a lot anyway. Yeah, I mean, I won a lot. I, I won. I won the senior peer record open four times. Uh huh. Won the class, but in only once. But got the list quite a few times, you know. Yeah. Good. Uh, never, you know, won all the light music at, at open in Inverness, but never got a prize in the light in the former winners. Okay. Until um, the last two years I played at Inverness. And I got a second, which I blame Alistair Gillis for because he got the first. I And uh, as if he hadn't had enough of those, those, those wins at Inverness. Oh, no. so, and then the second, the next year I got a fourth, and then I became headmaster and quit competing. So out of 17 years of playing in that former winners, the last two times I played, I was getting in the prize list.